Vincent van Gogh, is one of the most celebrated artists of the 20th and 21st century. However, he died in the 19th century. All of the celebration of his works happened after his death, if you couldn't, um, tell by the dates. He was the quintessential starving artist. Famously, he only sold one painting in his life, and yet he created some of the most striking works of his and any time period only for them to go unloved and for his work to go unappreciated. Valve is just like Van Gogh, uh, for the purposes of this argument, I guess. Uh, Valve made the airstrike. The airstrike, unappreciated, unloved, full of nuance and sick tech and cool rocket jumps that only a few people ever bother to appreciate. Uh, just like Van Gogh. If you think that's rude to Van Gogh, uh, I don't care. Van Gogh has been dead for like 3,000 years. The Romans nailed that guy to the cross. He's a corpse, and this gun is in front of your face, right now, where you can appreciate it, but none of you are. I even did a Twitter poll to make sure. I want to change that. I strongly believe that the airstrike is the coolest gun in TF2. Not the coolest rocket launcher, the coolest gun, period. Nothing else is even half as cool as this. I want to convince you the gun is cool. And that, um, I'm cool, by extension. You know what else makes me cool? Uh, playing, playing Raid Shadow Legends. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, the smash hit free game available for Android, iOS, and PC. To celebrate Valentine's Day, Raid wants me to tell you the three champions I date. First up is Cagebound, full body, chastity cage. That's hot. Second up is Slither Brute. Lizard Tank got no eyelids. It is perfect for unbroken, intimate eye contact. And third up is Trocodyte. He is just incredible at getting down. <laughs> and while I'll be celebrating Valentine's Day with this handsome lump of lizard, Raid Shadow Legends will be bringing in the month of love with several debuts for Valentine's Day champions. An Amazon Prime gaming drop that features Genbo the Dishonored until March 2nd for Amazon Prime subs. And Ronda Rousey. That's right, real life MMA fighter and pro wrestler Ronda Rousey uh, has joined the good fight against the evil banner lords. To get Ronda, just open raid seven days before February 20th, and to make the most of your Ronda, uh, new and old players can simply use the promo code RAIDRONDA to get that smattering of stuff you see on your screen right now. Don't forget, Forge Pass Season 7. On top of all that, if you're new to Raid Shadow Legends, simply click the link in the description or scan the QR code at the top left to collect a free epic champion, 200k silver, an XP boost, an energy refill, and one epic skill tome. <laughs> Whoa, I feel like I just got possessed by like a, by like a demon or the spirit of capitalism there. The airstrike. The airstrike has some unique properties. It's a complex, unwieldy thing that lies to you about what it wants you to do and hides all of its coolest tech from you, unless you have a lot of experience with Team Fortress 2. I'm gonna say it up front. This weapon's coolest abilities lie behind literally hours of practice and maybe repetitive strain injuries. While on the ground, the airstrike fires an identical speed to stock. The projectiles travel the same speed, they just do a little less damage and have a little less splash. Enough to offset most of the damage thresholds for soldier by one rocket in most fights at most ranges. However, whenever you kill an enemy, your max rocket capacity is increased, from a base of 4 up to 8. Of course, if you kill someone with the Islander, the Vita Saw, the Bizarre Bargain, or another airstrike chad, you can just bypass this entirely. The airstrike also has a reduced health cost to rocket jump with as well. While airborne from an explosion, either yours or another player's, you fire at a rate of about three and a half rockets per second. But in turn, airborne rockets have almost no splash damage. Your first rocket that makes you rocket jump has the delay of any other grounded rocket, because it was a grounded rocket. The exception to this is that when you surf somebody else's explosions, you're not subject to the initial firing delay of your first rocket, because your first rocket would have been airborne instead of on the ground. Your last rocket fired after landing has the accelerated firing speed of the airborne rockets and doesn't share their splash damage penalty. Honestly, the faster airborne firing speed is less useful in offensive combat situations than you'd assume. It's way too easy to unleash eight rockets at the apex of your jump, whiff all of them, and then die because you landed in the middle of a crowd of enemies. The only time you want to unload all of your rockets in midair is while harassing either a crowd of enemies safely from a distance or harassing a sentry nest safely from a distance. I think I might have killed more people on accident while rocket jumping with the airstrike than while using it for its intended purpose. Oh. <laughs>
The intended purpose of the airstrike is for you to float lazily through the air, unleashing eight rockets on everyone beneath you. But that sucks. The parachute that came with the airstrike sucks. Doing this sucks. It will get you killed. When bombing into someone, you want to hold off on firing rockets until you're extremely close to the ground, and you definitely don't want to fire more than two or three depending on your clip size. It's important you leave one rocket for you to get out of there. You can also maintain your rocket jumping status on the ground by bunny hopping. I'll show you how to practice bee hopping in a way that makes it consistent, and I'll show you how to use bee hopping to maintain increased fire rates around corners to surprise enemies. This tech is pretty fringe though, and entirely unnecessary for making use of the airstrike. In fact, almost all of the tech I'm about to teach you is completely unnecessary to make the airstrike good or even great. At its core, the airstrike is a rocket launcher that deals a small portion less damage, but can stack up to 8 rockets in the clip. After you have 4 kills, you're damn near unstoppable. It's hard to imagine a gun that lets you go on sicker, more powerful tears than the airstrike. Not having to reload for 8 shots makes the airstrike incredible while being pocketed or ubered. Even though the airstrike's rapid fire mode kinda sucks for combat, it is uncontested for mobility. The only thing that comes even remotely close is the beggar's bazooka. This mobility is why I pair the airstrike with the gunboats exclusively. The parachute sucks, shotguns are boring, backpacks are for team players, and brother, you're on your own. I just can't pass up on 10 health rocket jumps in conjunction with accelerated firing speed. You can pull off some absolutely insane rocket jumps with the airstrike, especially when you see a slope, or a long, tall, flat, vertical surface. This is one of the only guns in TF2 that will make you re-examine every map you've been playing for the last 15 years in excruciating detail. In this clip, I see this upward slope. I've never paid attention to it before in my life. I know there are a bunch of snipers on Blue's spawn roof because there always are. Come on, it's upward. So I take a quick horizontal jump, followed by several rapid speed pogo skips, in order to bomb the snipers and kill them from a direction and speed they would have never been able to anticipate. This is the first time I did that jump, ever. Later, I would refine it. But the airstrike gave me some incredible opportunity for emergent gameplay in that moment and every other moment I have ever played with it. If you can't or won't do frame-perfect tricks, the airstrike is maybe the rocket jumping gun. Yes, even above the rocket jumper. Because the rocket jumper can't do this. Come on, are you- are you seeing this? This is the pop shove it of soldier. Uh, let's be honest, alright? There are better melee weapons than the market gardener for the airstrike, but almost none of them are nearly as cool. And that's what we're aiming for, right? Like, maximum cool. Infinite cool, even. My market gardener is named after, um, a line from Final Fantasy IV. Like I said, infinite cool. Dude, I am killing it today! My recommendation to practice these jumps is to start with a complex jump you're familiar with and have mastered. Like, the classic upward jump. You know, this one. Then you just adapt it to the airstrike. See how firing multiple rockets in rapid succession can change your velocity and speed. Usually before doing an airstrike pogo into a ramp for huge air, I like to start with a fast, horizontal jump against a wall into a slope, and then try to do my first pogo slightly before I meet the foot of the ramp. I feel like it makes the rest of the jump more consistent. Something else that helps with consistency is simply finding a marker to start your jump on, so you can start it from a consistent location and speed after some experimentation. Like for this jump, from Lakeside Yard to almost anywhere on the map, I start on the corner of this rock outcropping underneath ruins. For the opposite jump, I start on these stairs near battlements. There's not a lot of advanced airstrike jumps documented yet, so you will probably have to experiment. But for getting started, upward first through third is really great to practice this kind of jump, on both defense and offense. Just make sure when practicing any of these jumps, you try to practice jumps that are four rockets or less. You can practice bigger, longer, more elaborate jumps, but four rockets is all you can really guarantee. The next bit of tech for the airstrike is bee hopping. You can maintain your accelerated firing rate from rocket jumping by simply pressing jump on the perfect server frame when you land. Obviously, frame-perfect jumps are easy to say, but 
hard to perform. TF2 servers run at about 66 ticks a second. To truly be able to make this consistent, you will need a monitor that meets at least 66 frames, and your frame rate should be higher than 66 frames too. If it's not, well, install a config. Each B-Hop generally buys you about three or so rockets after landing. This tech is, in general, most useful to coast around corners and surprise entirely unsuspecting enemies, or to spam out a door or choke. I think it works best on defense, but it is useful when pushing a choke on offense, especially if you know there's a dispenser around the corner. And each jump will have to be done manually. There are training maps for TF2 B-Hopping, because of course there are. If you are going to do this, I highly recommend rebinding your right click to jump. Binding right click to jump is an old quake trick and has been making B hops in the Source and Quake engine more consistent for over 20 years. See how many platforms you can B hop across consistently, and then practice B hopping following a rocket jump on like TR walkway. Just make sure that you set your fake lag setting to whatever you'd regularly have on your local server. The airstrike is not all daisies and rainbows, you know? I'd be remiss if I didn't actually talk about the impact of the downsides. Don't get it twisted. The downsides? Pretty bad. Less splash damage, and less damage in general on rockets often means you can struggle to secure kills after respawning. Things are gonna feel really, really off until you adapt. Everything is just gonna take an extra rocket or so than feels normal, and scouts are gonna ruin your day. You're also gonna be at a distinct disadvantage against mostly soldiers at point-blank range. My advice is to start connecting rockets directly with your enemy's center of mass. You're gonna want to do that anyway, especially when bombing, because bombing has reduced splash. Be conservative about how much you're going to fire when bombing, because it's pretty likely that they're gonna get bounced in the air. This is another reason b-hopping is so good with the airstrike. Now you can fire rapidly at their height for sustained periods of time without needing to worry that they're gonna go flying. The last downside to the airstrike is that you're gonna spend 10 million years reloading. Reload literally all the time. Use auto reload. People don't complain about reload speed on the sticky bomb launcher because the sticky bomb launcher has eight total shots. Same here. So, uh, so hey, uh, how about reloading this page and watching the video a second time? Maybe you should leave a comment too. Tell your friends, feed the algorithm, feed the algorithm! What's that sound? Bang! The postman bangs that a telegram came for the Danish gang. His first hand man's got a filament textured brain. The cinnamon scented fangs, the nuttiness with the tang. A little bit of grace. Oh, in this place. Historically glistening carapace. Bo